Process capability refers to whether a process is capable of giving us what we want or not. Designing our processes to be capable is an essential part of quality management. In order to produce good quality output, our processes need to meet or exceed customers' expectations. Let us say you are looking to buy a cup of coffee. You have a number of requirements regarding this cup of coffee. Let us zoom into one of them, which is the temperature of the coffee. Let us say you like your coffee at 160 degrees. There are several restaurants that serve coffee, but they don't pay much attention to temperature. Only my restaurant promises 160 degrees, so you show up at my door. I brew a fresh cup of coffee and serve it to you. You suddenly pull out a thermometer and test the coffee. You find that it's only at 157 degrees, so you return it and ask for a new cup. You won't settle for reheating in the microwave. I go back to my coffee machine and brew you a fresh cup. This time it's at 162 degrees, so you return it again. I cool it for a minute, then serve it right back to you. But you now find that it's at 159 degrees, so you return it again. After numerous attempts and a little help from your thermometer, I finally serve your coffee at 160 degrees. But that's when you reach into your bag and pull out another fancy schmancy space age NASA approved digital atomic gyroscopic solar powered infrared thermometer that can read up to the fourth decimal point. You find out that the coffee is at 160.1823 degrees. So naturally, you return it. I brew yet another cup, but this one is at 159.9852. Pretty soon, I close my shop and declare bankruptcy. As you can see from this example, there is no process in the world that can produce and serve coffee at exactly 160.0000000 degrees. Any process will have variability, even one using the most fancy high-end coffee machine. I should never have advertised coffee at a specific temperature. After several months, I reopened the restaurant. The sign says, under new management. It's just me with a disguise, but the difference is I really am smarter now. Here's what I advertise. If you don't mind coffee at 160 degrees plus or minus 10 degrees, it will cost you $2. If you want coffee at 160 degrees plus or minus 5 degrees, it will cost you $10. If you want coffee at 160 degrees plus or minus 1 degree, it will cost you $20. And then, lo and behold, you walk into my life again. You don't recognize me, of course. You take a look at the menu and then finally settle for a $2 cup of coffee. Cheapskate! You're not really that fussy, are you? Now that you realize you have to pay for it? Not even your NASA thermometer can get me now. But when I go home that evening, I am not able to sleep. I get nightmares about green Martians wielding NASA thermometers. Yes, they do bear a resemblance to you. I decide that I should sign up for a class on quality management. I really need to figure out how to design my process so as to have a decent shot at serving coffee within 160 degrees plus or minus 10 degrees. I collect some data about the coffee machine that I currently own. Once I set the knob at 160 degrees, it produces coffee in a range of temperatures. These temperatures seem to follow a normal distribution with a mean of 160 degrees and a standard deviation of 5 degrees. Therefore, within my advertised range of 160 degrees plus or minus 10 degrees, I am able to fit two standard deviations on either side of the mean. That is, my machine is capable at the 2 sigma level. What does that imply? Based on the properties of the normal distribution, I know that about 95.5% of the coffee will lie within two standard deviations on either side of the mean. Therefore, about 95.5% of the coffee I produce will be within the advertised 160 degrees plus or minus 10 degrees range. The remaining 4.5% will be unacceptable to the customer, in other words, defective. That's an awful lot of coffee that is going to be wasted. 
I need to buy a more precise coffee machine. So I call a coffee machine company to inquire about machines that can give me more precise temperature levels. The salesperson shows me four different models. For all the models, if I set the knob at 160 degrees, the average coffee temperature turns out to be 160 degrees. The difference is in the range of temperatures produced. Model A is the cheapest one. It can produce coffee at an average temperature of 160 degrees with a standard deviation of 3.33 degrees. I calculate that three standard deviations on either side of the mean will fit within my advertised range of 160 degrees plus or minus 10 degrees. We call this machine capable at the three sigma level. This process will stay within the desired temperature range 99.75% of the time. Only 0.25% of the coffee, or one out of every 400 cups, will be defective. Model B is more expensive. It can produce coffee at an average temperature of 160 degrees with a standard deviation of 2.5 degrees. I calculate that four standard deviations on either side of the mean will fit within my advertised range of 160 plus or minus 10 degrees. We call this machine capable at the four sigma level. This process will stay within the desired temperature range 99.995% of the time. Only 0.005% of the coffee, or one out of every 20,000 cups, will be defective. Model C is even more expensive. It can produce coffee at an average temperature of 160 degrees with a standard deviation of 2 degrees. I calculate that five standard deviations on either side of the mean will fit within my advertised range of 160 plus or minus 10 degrees. We call this machine capable at the five sigma level. My process will stay within the desired temperature range 99.99995% of the time. Only 0.00005% of the coffee, or one out of every two million cups, will be defective. Model D is the most expensive one. It can produce coffee at an average temperature of 160 degrees with a standard deviation of only 1.67 degrees. I calculate that six standard deviations on either side of the mean will fit within my advertised range of 160 plus or minus 10 degrees. We call this machine capable at the Six Sigma level. My process will stay within the desired temperature range 99.9999998% of the time. Only 0.0000002% of the coffee or two out of every billion cups, or one out of every 500 million cups, will be defective. As you can see, no process will be perfect enough to give me 100% defect-free output. But Model D, the Six Sigma capable model, seems to come pretty close to perfection. Unfortunately, along with its astronomically better quality, it also comes at an astronomically better price. We have expressed the precision and quality of my current coffee machine and the four models under consideration in terms of 2 sigma, 3 sigma, 4 sigma, 5 sigma, and 6 sigma capability. Corresponding to these process capability levels, we have seen that the process quality levels will be 95.5%, 99.75%, 99.99995%, 99.9999998% good output, respectively. Going from one model to the next, the process capability level seems to increase only linearly. However, the quality level increases astronomically. Generally speaking, we don't consider the two sigma process as being capable of producing good quality, since it is only able to do that about 95.5% of the time. The three sigma and higher processes would be considered capable. Comparing the prices and precision levels of the four models, I think I can settle for model A, which will give me a three sigma capable process. Out of every 400 cups that I produce, 399 will be good, 
and one will be defective, rather than go in for a more expensive machine, it looks like it will be cheaper to throw out one out of every 400 cups.